Well, once again, to limit the uh, population of 500 million, you're going to have to exterminate, I think it's nine-tenths of the globe. So you've got to ask yourself, who would put up stuff like that? Hmm. Well, they didn't want to leave their name. They didn't, this was put up by the, you know, the Granite Society or the, you know, the West Nigerian Muslims or the, you know, the African Masons or the, you know, the British Sterling lovers. No, they didn't leave their name there. So this is like kind of a little mystery thing, the Georgia Guidestones. To think that people think that way, let alone what if people in power start thinking that way? Have we had that previously? Should you be aware of it presently? So, I got some other thoughts. I'm going to try to roll the show with this one, and this is, you know, how we'll try to finish some of the show, and that is a blissful future. What would I believe a blissful future would entail? Well, I thought this was a good one. This is Henry Paulson. He was the guy who was in charge of what? The Treasury. When they changed the laws and took power away from Congress and gave this Treasury Secretary and all future Treasury Secretaries these unlimited powers to nationalize any business or bank, even if they're failing or not. So anyway, here's a wanted thing. Why? Because he's heard America. So I figure the day will come in the future when he's a wanted man. Then behind him, oh, I know, all you Sharon viewers and the rest of you world guys, you all voted for Barry, huh? I mean, uh, Obama, okay? Well, why do I think Obama should be a wanted person? Because didn't he go back to the Senate so he could push that banker bailout? Remember, they called it a banker bailout. Then they did it on the weekend, so you really couldn't look at it. And then what? Then it was a rescue plan. And they threatened us with what? Depression. They threatened us with martial law. Yeah. Yeah, people. So who pushed this? Well, Barry made it back to push that. So good old Obama. I think future would be good if he was a wanted guy. Here we got Barney Frank. That's right. Yes, what could I see in a happy future? In a happy future, we'd have a wanted poster with Barnard Frank on there. Why? Barnard Frank's actually my representative here in Massachusetts. What a loser. Okay? I'm sorry. When I think about this, he pushes for this bailout. They stole money from you, the taxpayer, to give to bankers who are giving each other billion-dollar bonuses, okay? Tens of millions of dollar bonuses, okay? Are not helping the people. They haven't built a bridge. They haven't built a school. They haven't built a hospital, okay? They stole from you, okay? And they did it through the guise of government, okay? And what does that mean? That means they're going to come down to your house with muscle, badges, and guns to make you pay those taxes so that these bankers can have money. And who caused the problem? the bankers. So you got to ask yourself, why do we love Barney Frank? Yeah, ask Sharon viewers. Oh, <laughs> here we go. It's Nancy. This is Nancy Pelosi. Yes, in a good future, what would we have? We'd have Nancy's face on a wanted poster. Why? Because she too came in and said, hey, let's steal from the poor and give it to the rich the ultra-rich. This whole thing of bailing out the bankers, okay? This whole thing of like, everybody's worried about Wall Street, Wall Street, Wall Street. All the worry about Wall Street has killed Main Street. You know, it's Wall Street that, you know, did the, hey, let's fund the big, you know, the big Walmart, okay? Let's fund all the big people and squeeze all the, all the little mom and pops who made up America, who built America. It wasn't these people. And by the way, we built America without an income tax, okay, to the greatest nation in the world. But these people want to use that income tax, okay, to feed bankers. They're stealing from you. So in a happy future, on a happy thought, we'd be looking for Nancy Pelosi. Oh, hey. Here he is. He's the new, he's going to be the fall guy. Because remember, we had Greenspan. Now we got Ben Bernanke. Helicopter Ben, they called him, because his solution to deflation was, I'll put money up in helicopters and rain it on the people. That's exactly what's happening. In the past seven weeks, okay, if you listen to Bloomberg or the Associated Press or whatever, you'll find out that that bailout's now gone into the trillions of dollars created from nothing to help out bankers and foreign bankers at that, not even American bankers. They're stealing from you. Just like Madoff, the money made, he not only made off with the money, but he got it out of country. That's what this guy's, hmm, him and Paulson, huh? They're right on my, you know, happy future wanted list. And then, yep, there's GW. I like to think of him as birdcage liner. Why would a happy future have him as a wanted person? Because anyone who puts up with torture, anyone who brings the country to wars based on lies and then says, oh, gee, I don't know, that's playing a little Ollie North for me, let alone his partner, Cheney, who, by the way, if you remember, for the past 30-plus years, we've had either a Bush or a Clinton in the White House, haven't we? Yeah. Maybe all this thing with bankers, maybe all this thing, you know, whether you go Republican or Democrat, it's the same Goldman Sachs people, huh? It's the same banker people. Your new Treasury Secretary from Barack Obama, what's his job? 
He's the head of the New York City Federal Reserve. Yeah, well, that's a change, right? Because you wanted change. So you voted for Barack Obama. At least that's what the media who lies to you told you. If you vote for Barack, you're going to get change. See? Change. Change. Change is good. This guy was bad, so change is going to be good. Think about it. Who's the uh, defense secretary? Gates. Where have you heard that? Oh, he's the defense secretary now. That's because you wanted change. Yeah. Here's the big secret. Not a lot of change, folks. It's still the bankers and the military industrial complex. And after they destroy our economy, after they steal all your wealth, after you're penniless and poverty and starving, that's when they're going to say, welcome to the American military. Why? Because it's going to be the American military used against the Americans. That's right. Read the Army Times, September 8th. They're deploying the United States Army here in America to put down dissent. You think it's because these bankers knew what they were doing? But the bottom line for you people out there is think about it. Once the economy, the you know Pax Americana empire thing crushes because there's no more money because you can only squeeze the people so much and the money buys nothing and they're printing trillions of dollars creating them in weeks where it used to take, gosh, 200 years for us to get up to our first trillion. Think of what's going to happen. They're going to end up using the military in more foreign wars. Barack Obama, okay, he's going to be your change. And then they're going to say, well, we need a draft. That'll get those unrestful youth off the street, won't it? Because if you leave your unrestful youth off the street with nothing, let's see, what's the quote go? This is from a guy who did, does trends research. He says, if people lose everything they have and they have nothing to lose, then those people lose it. So economically, if they take us down, the people will get upset and they'll use the military on the people and it won't be the first time in history. And the thing they'll do is they'll even start more foreign wars based on lies, as you know they've done in the past. And that way they can institute their draft and get those dissenting individuals off. And they'll think they're doing something patriotic. Look at all the people that went to Iraq thinking they were doing something patriotic. Those who went to Afghanistan thinking they were doing something patriotic. Great Americans. And when they found out that the whole thing was a sham and it was based on lies, one of them happened to be named Pat Tillman, the poster child for the war. When he found out it was a sham and a lie, they killed him. And you think I'm kidding. So it's time once again for you to wake up your neighbors, for you to care about your family, for you to care about your town, about your city, about your state. It's time to think more local. Forget this thing, global thing. These are bankers lying to you. This whole ecology thing, and I'm all for, you know, maintaining a healthful environment. But this whole carbon footprint thing, we'll cover in later shows, that's just a way for you to pay taxes to these bankers for your carbon footprint, they're going to tell you. They've lied to you so much, you think carbon dioxide's bad. So, there's my happy thoughts. Once again, a future where they actually arrest these crooks and criminals, okay? And we can start raising our children. We are now becoming economically bankrupt. We're already morally bankrupt. Put on your TV if you don't believe me. Change the channel, okay? And we're spiritually bankrupt. It's time for you viewers out there to get off your dairy ears. Wake up your neighbors. Start understanding that it's about being American, not about being a Republican or a Democrat. It's about being American. And that's where individuals have rights and freedoms, not this collective BS that they're trying to sell you. With that, we're going to end this show, and thank you for watching The Real Story. Don't forget, Friday night, we get The Real Story late-night movie.